Hi everyone, it's Ingrid here and this is our first live and R for 2021, 2021. I'm not sure, I've heard a few people saying it in different sorts of ways. Anyway, so what are we talking about today? So welcome to 2021. I said to you on my preparation video that I was in this person's house. Um, I was going to go to the library and um, and my friends had offered to help me out by saying that we could I could actually come and use their house but it's this living art gallery it's just incredible anyway I show I could give you a tour of the house later if you're interested but let's focus on what we're talking about today so what are we going to talk about today we're going to talk about being resourceful and achieving absolutely anything that you set your mind to so um, here we are we're probably Maybe you're thinking about setting your goals and you know maybe you've seen things on Facebook and Instagram you know lots of oh my gosh now's the time to set your goals it's the turn of the year and you know it's super important to um, to get started with goals I'm I've got a kind of a different perspective on goals um, you know let's get super excited about the big outcomes that's what people say but um, you know, I've, I've always had this different view about goal setting. And a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed, actually it's a few weeks ago now, I interviewed two extraordinary women. One is Kat Long and the other one is Jo Auburn. And they have started an incredible business called Our Trace. Super shout out to Kat and Jo, if you're listening to this one, you might be. Um, but there's always so much wisdom in the podcast interviews, that, the conversations that I have with the guests. And there was one thing that Jo said in that conversation that has just really, truly stuck with me. And she said that when she was going through this incubator, the advice they were given, or one of the things they were suggested, was don't look up too often. Um, you know, do not look up too often. And what she meant by that was, is that, um, you know, you set these goals, but when you look at these big goals, if you look at them too often, it's actually quite demoralizing. And that's what I want to talk to you about today in the context of this, um, this comment of hers and the idea that you can achieve absolutely anything that you set your mind to. You know, we're told we need to have these big goals. And, you know, I've even heard people talk about hairy, audacious goals. Um, big hairy anyway the hair sounds disgusting actually to me um, but here's my perspective on that what I've seen in all my years of working with small businesses with startups and with people in the corporate world those huge goals can actually be incredibly demoralizing when people wake up every day and they look at that big goal or they turn up for work every day and they feel every single day exactly how far away from that big goal they actually are. And so that's one of the things about setting these huge goals and looking at them all the time. So it's a type of self-sabotage, isn't it? You can start to see how, you know, don't look up too often. So the thing we need to target is absolutely out there in the distance. We, it's super important to know what we want to do, but I call that our someday goal. And the truth is that the goals need to be underpinned by behavior. And a series of small incremental steps, milestones, the pieces that help you know that you are moving together towards the direction of your goal. So um, let's give you, let me give you an example. Um, Somebody's putting a comment in here. Thank you, Mark. I agree. People set goals that are too big and they become demoralized. Absolutely. So let me give you an example of, of how these milestones can work and how they can actually sort of keep you going. So when we were driving back from holidays a few months ago, it, the first sign we saw said Sydney, 1,000 and something kilometers. And honestly, I felt like that was just so far away. And I thought, why are we not in a plane? Why are we driving, driving? And at this many kilometers an hour, how many hours is it going to take us? But what happened along the way is we saw signs that said Sydney 920, Sydney 790. And so it kind of this small accomplishment gave us the sense that we were making progress towards where we were going. And I think one of the best examples I have of this um, kind of demoralizing from having a goal that's just too big is some years ago I worked with a lovely woman. Honestly, she was just gorgeous. She was very funny. She was from New Zealand actually. And she wanted to lose weight, five kilos. And she'd been telling me this the week before that she was absolutely going to start her diet on Monday. 
And so um, Monday morning I turned up and there we were. I, I, I started work at 11 and she said, I am so glad you're here. I need to go downstairs and get a pastry from Michelle's patisserie. And I said, hi, I thought you were starting your diet today. And she said, oh, I did. I started this morning and already it's 11 a.m. and I am no thinner than I was. Look, my pants are still too tight. And off she went. Now, I do find this amusing and maybe you think it's funny as well. And it is funny, but this is what happens in business. We set this goal and then because by this time it hasn't happened, we just give up or we try something else or we sign up with the next thing. Oh, I tried that on Facebook, that didn't work. Oh, I'm just gonna jump over to Instagram. Oh, I'm gonna mess around with TikTok now because Instagram doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Oh, I had a website, oh, I had an email. And so we try these things and because they don't work, we decide, well, there we go. I'm just gonna try something else. And we don't take the time to stay disciplined and focused on what we're doing and we give up we move on to the next thing, we change our products, maybe we go from a service to a product, and this is what happens, and business goes down a different path. Now, back to the behaviors and underpinning your goal. Most business truly comes down to just a few key behaviors. In fact, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say there's one, there's absolutely one, um, one behavior. And you're right, yeah, there you go, on to the next guru, yes, absolutely. And I've just reread, and I honestly don't know for how many times I've reread this book, but this book, The One Thing, oh, and I just realized I'm not flipped. So you, you're seeing this book backwards. It's called The One Thing. And so I don't know how many times I've read this, but I just reread it. It's a really simple, simple read. It's such a terrific reminder that the focus is on one thing that I can do right now. And this is where we put all our energy and our focus. So when you think about that big goal, and that's gonna take maybe five years or longer. And you know, I don't know about you, but there's been some pretty terrific um, tweets and comments and articles about the Queen's Gambit, which we watched over the, um, the break as well. We kind of binged that one, I think. Um, and I'll post the link in this because there's a couple of really terrific articles about how it has taken him 30 years. 30 years from when he originally um, read the book and then how many times he went to ask people would they be interested? And you know, we know the same, JK Rowling, there's these examples. So it takes a long time. Um, so take that big goal and think about it in this way. What is the one thing I wanna do someday? What is my someday goal? And then let's say, based on my someday goal, what is the one thing that I can do in the next five years? Now, I want you to listen to my language super, super carefully here. What is the one thing I can do not must need, let, let's, let, let's release ourselves from that sort of language. Let's, what's the one thing I can do? Now then we say to ourselves, based on my five year goal, what is the one thing I can do in this next year? Based on my one year goal, what is the one thing that I can do in the next month? Based on my monthly goal, what is the one thing that I can do this week? Based on my weekly goal, what is the one thing I can do today? Now, based on my daily goal, what is the one thing that I can do right now? So you see how this big, big goal that's out there, this someday goal, can actually come back to what is it you can do today. So let's go back to Joe's comment about don't look up too often. You might look at that someday goal from time to time and that keeps us inspired and that's, you know, Simon Sinek's why and, you know, the underpinning, you know, vision that we have for what we're doing. But that can actually be quite demoralizing, as we said. So the goal you absolutely want to look at more frequently is based on my daily goal, what is the one thing I can do right now? Which cascades up into, based on my weekly goal, what is the one thing I can do today? So can you see how this completely changes how you think about what you're working on? And I want to talk a little bit about how do you keep this focus. Focus is a matter of deciding what things you are not going to do. I'm a people pleaser. I love saying yes to people. And so it's so easy for me to get caught up in other people's excitements and say, yes, I'll help you with that. Um, I, you know, I would love to be on involved in that. I get so excited. I get so excited that, um, you know, I can be helping with something else. I can see a question here. I can have a plan that can be
be adjusted as the world changes. Absolutely. I can have a plan that adjusts as the world changes. And that's why if you're working on what you're doing today, and what you're working on this week, is how do you then adjust to what the world is, is throwing at you? And, you know, we, we just don't know what we're going to have in front of us. But we can control two things. We can always control how we react to something. And we can also control the effort that we put in. And this is where the focus comes, is what is the behavior? What is the effort that we put? So we could say yes to lots of things that are fun and that are interesting, but do they take us in the direction of where we wanna go? Being able to say no is absolutely critical to staying in focus on this one thing. And I have recently had to say no to two different pieces of work. One I was super excited about doing and then I had to remind myself that it absolutely is not in line with what I am trying to achieve this year, this month, this quarter, this week. And I had another one that I was also quite sad to see go and it would have been so interesting to do but it was going to be very time consuming and so I've had to say no in a really polite way and say thank you so much for thinking of me and just right now, you know, here's what I'm working on and I need to stay focused on that. Okay, so there's a couple of other things. So one is we need to be able to say no to things. Your health, we've talked about sleep. We've talked about eating well, talked about moving, having time for your family, your friends, for cats, birds, dogs, whatever it is that you have around you, for plants, for nature, time for friends. This is super important that does your health allow you to stay focused and your environment, does your environment support you? I know I can spend three or four hours, maybe five hours completely focused and that's why I'm in this house today is that I absolutely can stay super focused um, on what I'm working on. Um, I go to the library sometimes, I work in a co-working space because I know in five hours I can do more than I can do in two days of constant interruptions. So maybe this is the one thing you can do right now is to take stock of your environment. Maybe your one thing right now is to, what are you saying yes to that you could be saying no to? So this year I have a goal and I've taken that goal and I've asked myself those questions. I know what I need to do today. I know what I need to do this week. I know what I need to do right now. Okay, so that's where I am for now. So hopefully that's feeling focused. I'm gonna take you on this journey with me and I really wanna help you do what it is you need to do. My big goal is still sitting out there, but every day I have my focus time as I start my day and I know that I am most alert in the morning, so that's my best focus time. So what have you set your mind to do? You can do anything you want. Be kind to yourself. As we've talked about many times, reflect on your achievements. You know, when you get to the end of the day, have a look at what you have achieved. Not what you haven't achieved, but what you have achieved. Pat yourself on the back. And when you make, when you make things happen, when you do some of the work that you're going to do, say yes that you've done that. Um, say no to the things that you're not gonna say yes to. But that's perfectly okay. You know, I know I get very excited, but you know, I think we need to approach ourselves with a compassionate heart, with the energy and the kindness and the gratitude for what we have and what we are able to do. So if you take a look at what you've done and where you need to tweak for tomorrow, you need to tweak for next week. So what have we talked about today? We've started with that expression, don't look up too often. Absolutely, have this big goal. Maybe it's hairy if you want it to be, but have your goal, but let's map it back. Let's map it back five years. Let's map it back a year. Let's map it back a month. You know, so what do you have to do today? So what might you say no to? What do you need to do? To, what can you do? What can you say no to? What can you do in your environment? So with that, I'm going to sign off. If anyone has any um, questions, please chat, put them in the comments. Um, I review back through this video um, in the group. It'll be popped there in the units section. I'll put those links in um, because this is all about how we can stay on the green line. Because the one thing is this idea of moving along the green line that I've been talking about. So it's the 4th of November, oh, January. <laughs> November. It's the 4th of January today. I shall see you back here on the 11th. Um, maybe I'll be in front of this gorgeous artwork. Maybe I'll be somewhere else, but I shall see you next week. Take care.